Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we are going to be making terracotta tiles. And I know what you're thinking, what the fuck are terracotta tiles? Basically, uh, they're those roof tiles that kind of look like half a cylinder. Uh, you see them in beach houses, not necessarily beach houses, but houses that are near the beach. They're these clay tiles that are in very arid, warm uh, places. And uh, you've seen roofs made out of them. And I'm going to show you how to make those. Uh, let's do it. So we're going to do this completely in geometry nodes. And the idea is I'm just making a geonodes group. Uh, the idea is we're first going to make a bend, kind of like this arch, which we're going to be able to procedurally control to create different kinds of clay tiles. Uh, we're then going to take this. We're going to extrude it to give it thickness. And then we're going to solidify it in a sense and instance it. If that sounded like a bunch of nonsense, well, I don't know why, I think I explained it pretty clearly. Uh, so let's start by making the arch procedurally. And I know what you're thinking, there is an arc node. We're not going to use it. We're going to use mesh line. With mesh line, I'm going to set it so that we have our endpoints at 0, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 0, 0. So it goes along the x-axis and there are 10 points uh, that compose this line since we have 10 points. And what I want to do is say, as the index goes to the right, or as we increase on the X, kind of bend it like this in a very customizable way, okay? Anytime we recast the position of something, we use a set position node. Just a general testament for life, you know? One of the 10 great, not testament, commandments. It's one of the 10 commandments for life. Thou shalt use set position when resetting the position. Either way, we're going to set position as a function of the x variable, and we want to shift it on the y-axis. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is we take our position, we separate it by x, y, z. I'm saying keep the x-coordinate, but for the y-coordinate, we want to do something fancy. That something fancy is going to be related to the, could be the index or the x-position. I feel like since we're going from 0 to 1, we may as well use the X position. So I'm going to use an RGB curves, connect the X to the color. You're going to be tempted to connect it to factor, but we want color and connect that to the Y. And what this is going to do, let's see. So we go from zero to one. Um, oh, it's because we need the Z axis. Derp. Um, I want it to go vertically on the, the Z axis. So point being, uh, as we go along the X, we're going along the Z relative to this graph. So if I go like this, you can see we get that arch, that nice back. Let's increase the uh, sample count. And we can create any kind of shape that we want. Um, so specifically, what I'm going to do is in the RGB curves, I'm going to set both of these down so it's kind of a flat line. And I'm going to take the center point and bring it up. And this is how we make the uh, arch. And we can have this set at 0.5. So the reason I'm doing this is we're eventually going to extrude this and give it thickness. But the idea is we can create any kind of tile shape we want, like slanted to the left, slanted to the right, etc. So now that we have this uh, altered edge, I'm going to extrude mesh relative to the edges. And instead of the normal, we are going to use a custom vector, namely the y-axis. So... Uh, as you can see, we can like shift the shape of the tile and do all kinds of interesting things. So I'm going to offset it by three, maybe two and a half. And this is something we want to expose as a uh, parameter. Uh, next, I want to give this terracotta tile some thickness. So I'm going to again extrude mesh, this time relative to the faces. And we just want to extrude it by a little bit. So you could either do it inwards or outwards. I'm going to do it outwards like that. Or maybe I do like a positive number. So maybe we'll go inwards, then we join it with the original mesh so that it's not just kind of like this hollow thing. We join it with this to create both of these. And then I'm going to merge by distance to make it a single mesh instead of two meshes kind of touching. Uh, so there's our terracotta tile. We can control the height of it. We can control kind of the shape of it. We can do some fancy stuff. There are roof tiles that literally look like this, by the way. Um, we can do a whole bunch of stuff, uh, including controlling the thickness, etc. cetera. Uh, but the next thing I want to do is I want to tile this. So I want to have one tile here, another here, here, here. And uh, to do that, I need to know the thickness of the tile. In this case, we know it's exactly equal to one since 
our endpoints set at 1, although we can do some stretching and do some funky stuff. Because this is set at 1, what we can do is we can create a mesh line. So right now we're doing instancing. I'm going to make a mesh line that is offset by 1 on the x-axis. So when we have the count set to 1, it's a point. Now it's 2, 3, 4, and it keeps being offset by 1. And for these, we want to instance on our points for each one. We are going to instance a tile. And they're going to be perfectly touching uh, because of the property that they're one apart. So we can make 5, 6, whatever. And now we want to create uh, terracotta tiles going this way. But it's not going to be as simple because one of them needs to be kind of on top. They're kind of sheathing. Uh, one, they're kind of cupping each other in a sense. I, I don't know how to say that in a not weird way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now create another mesh line that is the thickness or the gaps are the y distance along here. So before we knew our x distance was equal to 1 was our gap. Now we need our gap to be that length, uh, which happens to be our happens to be our extrusion length this way which is why I wanted to make it a parameter. So now what we can do is we can make a line that is separated on the y-axis by this factor that we make the offset. So when we look at our line, each um, point is going to be one terracotta tile offset from each other. So if I was to take this instance on points and then instance again on this line, let's see what we get. So I want to instance on the points, this thing, and uh, now we get these tiles. But again, I want them to be kind of sheathed into each other. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to multiply this offset. So when it's equal to 1, they're perfectly displaced. When there's a bit uh, something over 1, there's a bit of a gap. And when it's set to like 0.9 or something, they're kind of inside each other. And they now need to be offset vertically. By how much? By the uh, extrusion amount, their thickness in some sense. So this is also something we want to be a parameter, 0.06. I want to then offset them on the z by this amount too. So you can see they're perfectly kind of sheathed or cupped inside each other, if that makes sense. Now one thing I'm going to do that might not make a lot of sense is right now what we have is we have one tile. We instanced it along a line, and then we instanced that row along to make columns. That's fine, but uh, if we want to randomize each one individually, it's better to instance only one time, in a sense. So what I'm going to do is instead of instancing uh, tiles along the line and then rows along the new line, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to instance a mesh line on a mesh line. So... We're going to use our two mesh lines to basically create a grid. And then this is going to be the points for our instances. And I'll explain what that means in a second. So it looks exactly the same. But the difference is we start out, started off with a mesh line that we calculated in a certain way. We then created another mesh line that goes the other way that has a bit of a Z lift for that sheathing. We instance those to kind of create a grid. And only then, at the very end, did we put our tile. So now our tile is instanced on this grid, and this is useful because if we wanted to randomize something like the scale, so let's randomize scale using a single float, uh, we can now do that. Uh, whereas before, uh, we'd only be able to randomize one row and then it'd be copied again and again and again. So let's see. We've, oh, by the way, we want to make sure before we input it here that we realize our instances so that you, you could see before it was doing the exact same thing, right? The row had some randomization and then it's the same as we copy this way. Uh, this is what I was trying to describe. We want to uh, realize those instances. So now we're going to randomize each one individually. Um, okay. So at this point, we have a kind of a generator that we're using these two counts we can make a roof uh, for. Uh, but I want to make it look a bit more procedural and random and all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomize the rotation by a vector that clearly this is going too much. I want to randomize it a bit on the z, maybe by 0.04, and then it can go max the other direction by negative 0.04. So this just adds a bit of variability. So here's before and after. Just makes it look more realistic. 
We can also have a bit of x rotation, but we want it to be negative because we want each one to be kind of contained inside the other. We don't want it to go over. So just a bit that way. And then you could also do a bit of roll if you wanted to. So I'm going to go from this to the negative value. So again, before, after, it just makes it look more realistic. And to avoid the gaps that this will inevitably make, because they're rotating and they were perfectly fitted before, uh, we can scale each instance by like 1.1, and that's going to hide the gaps. So now we have kind of a randomized looking tile system that we can actually make it look more like a slanted roof by transforming it. I'm first going to move it so it's centered right there. By the way, the reason that it's exactly negative 7 is because we have 14 instances, so you have to divide by 2. Um, in fact, we can make that a parameter. So if we have 14 instances, to center it, we have to go halfway, so we multiply it by 0.5. I guess a negative 0.5 since we want to translate to the left. And then we take that and we combine XYZ such that now we can translate it. So no matter how many instances we have, it's always going to be centered, as you can see. Uh, so we center it and then we do a bit of a rotation on the X axis. The reason, oh, well, it's because it was already set to zero. Uh, the reason I want it centered is so that we can add an object over here and it's nice and simple. So I'm going to rotate it by, let's say, 20 degrees. And uh, there you go. Again, uh, we can always control the count, kind of the size of the roof, uh, the other dimension of the roof, and we have access to uh, other parameters like kind of the sheathing, like how inset they are inside each other in a sense. Um, along with other parameters. So I'm going to set this to 20, um, and now I want to make a custom material for this, just to, you know, have a material. I don't know. Uh, so we're going to set material, and by the way, it's very important that we uh, realized our instances, so we'll see if we need to realize them again, but we're going to set material, that material is going to be for all of these tiles, and we're going to randomize it per tile. But first of all, we have a material such that when we go to rendered view, and let's do this with like an HDRI and all that. So I'm loading up cycles uh, for our world settings. I'm going to have a environment texture, set that to an HDRI. I guess we should probably have an outdoor HDRI so that we actually have the sun cast on it. Um, so we now have this link to material that we can change the color of. Again, this material, I'm going to call it clay, uh, goes over here. And what I want to check is if in the geometry, if we go to random per island, no, it's not uh, randomizing it. So we want each tile to have its own unique value. Uh, to do that right now, it's being instanced, so it's getting one value and then being copied. Uh, just make sure to realize instances at the end here. Uh, this is going to give us a random per tile kind of coloring that we can use as the base color, which already looks kind of not bad, right? You send this through a color ramp, and then you pick two kind of clay-like colors. So it's kind of this reddish, orangish, darkish color. And it depends what kind of tiles you're going for. So it looks something like that. And then let's make the darkest one not as dark. Something like this. And there you go. I mean, that's the simple material to make it look a lot better. And by the way, if you're noticing some sheathing issues, um, there are a couple ways we can hide that. We can increase the extrusion. It's probably the fastest way to do that. Or you could uh, change the randomization. Uh, either way, I want to make this look a bit more like clay. So I'm just going to create a normal map using a noise texture. So with this noise texture, we set this to object coordinates. So it's nice and evenly distributed instead of like slanted generated coordinates, uh, we take this normal, or sorry, this uh, noise texture and send it through a bump node, which converts it into a normal map. And now let's see what this looks like. That's a bit intense. Let's bring down the strength. And let's bring up the roughness. And let's bring down the distance. And now this looks a lot more like clay tiles from a distance. 
right? And you can uh, play with how shiny they are. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, but I think this looks pretty uh, decent. Maybe we could have some of our clay tiles be a bit more yellow or reddish. Kind of depends on your preference. Uh, but I think that looks good. Uh, let's just add a general dirt map on top of this. So I'm going to make a kind of a low res kind of thing here. I'm going to mix in a bit of a color, a bit of a dirt map. This is going to be set to black. And we want to make this a bit more intense so we can see it. How long do we? 15 minutes. Let's wrap this boy up. So I'm making kind of a high contrast dirt map that when you look at it, wow, it's really not poking through a lot, is it? Why is it not poking through? Do we need to make it higher contrast this way? Yeah, there you go. And increase the roughness. So this is before we just have color and then after we have this dirt that kind of blends everything together um, a bit more nicely. We can make that black or white. Oh, I like the look of that. You know what we could do? We could have black dirt and then we can have a accum or maybe we could have white kind of a white map right here. And what I was just thinking, I don't know if I need to load this node. I don't know if I've done it yet. Ambient occlusion. Let's see what it looks like. I need to render loading kernels. This will just take a second. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that took a couple minutes. Um, so now we can see we have this ambient occlusion map. What did I want to do with it? Uh, we can use it. And let's, uh, can we use a color ramp here to make it a bit darker? Yeah. We can use this ambient occlusion map to add yet another level of detail in the base color where we mix in. Yeah, I like the look of that. Uh, where we mix in maybe kind of like a blackish color. And that makes it look much more kind of inset inside each other. So before, after, that looks pretty good to me, honestly. So here was our original color map, kind of boring. And this is kind of the nice and grungy uh, color map that I think looks a lot better. Let's make it a bit higher intensity. Um, so there you go. Procedural tiles. Is this what you wanted? Is this what you needed? Look at that. Um, I just want to say uh, before we end this, by the way, uh, that I know I kept emphasizing that we have complete control, but check this out. We can make tilted tiles. We can make kind of sine wave tiles here. Like, look at that. Uh, we could do all sorts of things using this. You could even proceduralize which tiles get what kind of distortion. Um, but that's just the thing. So, you know, thanks for watching, I guess. See ya. <laughs>